It is happening right now. The scientists and engineers, uh, as we say, have gone through these, uh, these very joyful, jubilant moments time and time again. Here's the last one, when that data, which you just saw transmitted into a computer animation, was received in the JPL's mission control. We have EA yeah. 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 Moments later, the administrator of NASA, Daniel Golden, stopped by CNN's live position there to tell us that this was not a 100% vindication for his cheaper, faster, better policy of sending things that don't cost a lot of money out into space. But he said the news so far certainly was good. And he talked about the 4th of July, American Independence Day, as he spoke to a group of reporters at a news conference just after he uh, stopped by our live position. What a birthday today. There's a lot of fireworks in the mission control room where I had the privilege of talking to some of the people who did this. And it's interesting. This is a revolution just of the type of the revolution that formed our country on the day of our birthday. The people who formed our country weren't afraid of taking risk. They weren't afraid of doing things differently, just like the Mars Pathfinder team. And they're doing just a terrific job. The three of the leaders of the space program that resulted in this return to the Red Planet were sitting there to take questions from reporters when all of a sudden the telephone rang. And guess who was on the other end of that phone line, Judy? The Vice President of the United States, who is also Chairman of the President's National Space Council. Congratulations to all of you out there on behalf of President Clinton and all of the people of our country. Happy Fourth of July and congratulations on doing an absolutely outstanding job. So, right now what is going on is uh, that more information, more data is being received at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory where my partner, John Zarella, is standing by. John, uh, have you heard anything more recent than what we have gotten in the past uh, 15 or 20 minutes? Well, we've got a little more information. I know you're big into, the, into computers and I want to tell you that their website Meister was just by here a few minutes ago. And he was telling us they already had, just today alone, 8 million hits. And that's just right here on their, at their website right here. So that's a tremendous indication of the volume of interest out there in what is happening on the Red Planet. And what we did find out, and Donna Shirley is here with us uh, to continue discussing this. Uh, I heard you had some more good news. That, tell us about landing the two degree angle. What does that mean? Right, well, the uh, Brian Muir had stopped by on his way back from the news conference. Deputy told, project. The deputy project manager and told us that uh, the lander was tilted at only two and a half degrees, which means it's flat as a pancake, so it's just perfect. And if the airbags have been pulled in properly, there should be absolutely no problem getting the rover off. So there's a good, indi good indication now. I know I overheard Brian talking to you and saying, we're going to get that rover off today. So That's things are hope. really moving along They're well. just incredible. Now, we just got the data back. The uh, Engineers still have to analyze it to make sure that it, everything's okay and understand the state of the spacecraft, but apparently everything is alive and well. Uh, we won't know exactly how much, you know, everything is until some of the data has been analyzed, and I think the next press briefing they'll bring that information forward. And that should be in about 20 minutes, 30 minutes or so. Right. And I wanted to mention that, our, that this website that got the 8 million hits is just one of about 15 sites that we have worldwide. I mean, everybody is mirroring for us. So if you can't get into the Pathfinder site, go to one of the mirror sites and you should be able to get in easily. Obviously, tremendous amount of interest is still building as we move on towards the first picture. Everybody out, out there wants to know, first picture, what are we looking at now, when? Well, that first picture is coming back around 4.30, and maybe by the end of the next press briefing, we'll have a picture. The, uh, that picture is not gonna be anything you'd wanna write home about. It's just a little picture, just a very highly compressed picture, just to look at whether the airbags are safely tucked in or not. That'll be that first image that we'll get. That's about 7.30 Eastern time. And uh, if all that looks good, then they'll proceed on NASA, to the, uh, the uh, engineers here, to moving to the next step, which be uh, getting the rover off the vehicle sometime this evening. So, John, a lot of exciting things yet to come here from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. John? No kidding. Uh, you guys try to maintain your energy levels and uh, not fall over out there. We'll be getting back with you throughout the night. Joining us here at CNN Center is Professor Kurt Grimal. 
uh, formerly of Georgia Tech. He, while he was there, he came up with all the terrific uh, video animation that uh, we were able to show you before the Mars Pathfinder landed on the Martian surface. Doctor, how are you feeling at this moment? Oh, it's just wonderful to see everything that has been planned come to fruition. 100% uh, successful for, so far. They only have about maybe 40% more to do today with, to have 100% completion for the day. Yeah, now this rover, you've got uh, a model here that uh, um, it shows pretty much what's going to happen. The fact that the, uh, the Pathfinder is not tilted, it's uh, just about, as Donna Shirley said, flat as a pancake, means the rover is going to be able to start its work pretty, uh, pretty easily, correct? That flatness means two important things. First of all, that the sunlight, when it does come up, will be hitting this evenly so they'll get, be able to get power on these solar panels. Mm -hmm. The second one is that if it's flat, it'll be able to roll off very easily. Yeah. Now, how far can the rover go? They're going to plan for the first seven days to be able to go up to 10 meters away from the lander area. The next two months, they'll try to go out even further. And if they're lucky and have everything work properly for the two months, they'll try to go for one year in which they'll go out even further. Wow. So they could, um, they can't plot. I mean, on the, on the surface of Mars, this is a Martian globe that you have brought in. Show us in general where the landing zone is and, um, and where... I mean, how much of that could the rover cover, uh, given that it's a, sure. in reality, it's only about this long, and uh, the, the wheels are fairly small, and even if they were spinning fast, it couldn't get very far. Well, for the audience at home trying to locate it on their own Mars globe, I'm sure everybody has one, mm -hmm. if you find the large canyon area, it is to the right and a little further up in an area right here. Now, the area in which this rover is going to go is so small my finger would cover the whole area. It's hard to, t to show it. Even a, a pinpoint is about all the area it's going to cover by this rover. But what this technology is going to show is that they can move a rover around the surface of Mars and hopefully on the third and fourth, maybe fifth mission back to Mars that'll be happening in four to five years, that they'll be able to even go kilometers away, maybe even 100 kilometers away. Kurt, our viewers are asking, how big is Mars compared to Earth? If you put them side by side, Earth would be about twice as big. That correct? is correct. And if you were going to look in the night sky tonight and try to find Mars, which way would you look? That may be a, that's a, uh, a question we, I, you were not prepared for, but uh, what can I'm you I'm going to have to, to play, plead innocence on that one. I'm an aerospace engineer yes, yes. and not a planetary scientist. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find out. Uh, and next time we come back, I'll tell you which way to look from uh, wherever you are in the United States or around the world to pick up the red planet. One thing about it, uh, during the days of the Hillbop Comet, when uh, my four-year-old and I went outside and pointed our binoculars up, the, long before we saw the comet, we saw the bright red planet. It is not hard to spot. It's the reddest big thing in the sky anytime you point your binoculars or telescope up that way. Judy? All right, John, we're going to hold you to that promise and ask you to tell us exactly where <laughs> Mars is in the heavens the next time we talk to you. It's a deal. <laughs> Thank you, John Holloman. NASA will hold its next news briefing a little later in our program. CNN will bring you that news conference live at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 Pacific. The following is CNN's coverage of a live event. Hi, it's John Holloman at CNN Center, about to take you to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California, where there's about to be another news briefing on the Pathfinder mission to planet Mars. The information we have been given so far is that for about the past hour and a half, computers at the Jet Propulsion Lab have been receiving data from Pathfinder. They have used that data to uh, paint a picture of just where it is, or at least how it is oriented, on the surface of the planet. They are hoping to get a weather report from Mars very soon. This is the orientation of Pathfinder on the surface of Mars. If you look very closely, you can see some uh, blue and red lines which represent the surface of Mars. This is um, how it looks right now, which is precisely the way it is supposed to look. It is only two degrees off of the perfectly uh, horizontal orientation for the solar panels that are just beginning to receive some sunlight from the very early morning sun coming up on the landing site on Mars as those solar panels charge the batteries on board the Sojourner rover as well as the mothership uh, Pathfinder. There are going to be some spectacular pictures which may well be sent back to Earth. Joining me from the Jet Propulsion Lab to talk us into this news conference, CNN's John Zarella, man who's been to more space launches than anybody else at this joint. How does this compare to watching the space shuttle go up? Well, you know, John, uh, 
the space shuttle is always an exciting event when it lifts off. There's no question about that. I've seen probably 60 or 70 of those, and every one is spectacular. But there is certainly an unbelievable degree of drama going on here. It's funny, you know, we can't see any of what's going on yet, but the drama is there, and I think that's what makes this story so amazing. You know, some of our viewers have uh, wanted to know out there, well, exactly where is Mars in the sky if they go out and, and take a look, and, and Donna Shirley... Where can we see Mars? Can we see Mars right now? Well, uh, we actually, we asked our project scientist, and he didn't know, but then we asked the guy who programmed the computer, who did all the software, and he said it's low in the western sky. So very low on the horizon, so it'd be pretty difficult for folks to see this time right, of the year. Right, right. Maybe they can see it uh, at, right after dark. Some new information that we yes. can get out uh, uh, very quickly before the briefing starts about what happened that you know now during the descent and landing. Right, as far as we know, uh, there were three bounces, and it, it took just three bounces, which is a very small number of bounces. And the first bounce was 18 Gs. That's 18 times the force of gravity. The second bounce, I think, was 9 Gs, and which is nothing. And then it rolled for about 92 seconds and then stopped. And when it opened up, it was absolutely flat, two and a half degrees tilt, which is absolutely nothing. So uh, that was really incredible news. Now, we have qualified these systems to land at 55 Gs. So it means it was a Jesus very nothing. soft a landing, very right? Very soft, gentle landing, which must mean that the radar altimeter worked perfectly and the airbags were cut loose just very low above the ground. And so it just absolutely couldn't be better. So all that animation that we have has to be redone now, right? Because it has right. it bouncing around too much on the surface before right. it comes to rest. Right. We'll, we'll redo that. <laughs> now you're going to get some of the information uh, in that. Now we also heard just recently that that first packet right. of low gain downlinked data about the health of the spacecraft is in. Yes, it is. And as far as we know, it's completely in. And the uh, the engineers have been analyzing the data. And I think that's going to be the subject of this next press conference. And so as far as we know, all the systems are healthy, including the rover systems. So all the spacecraft seems to be working just great. And we're ready for the next step, which is to get the high gain antenna pointed at the Earth. We're going to go now to the presser. Down. It's starting. So Good. we're going to switch right. now on CNN to the presser. Right. How appropriate it is that we also start today a determination to be the masters of the science of our solar system. It is wonderful. I just want to spend a few moments saying how proud I am of these young people who are sitting on my left and those who think young that are over in the mission control and worked on this program across the, the agency. And I also would like to take this moment to thank the American taxpayers who have had confidence in NASA as we've gone through all these changes and they stuck with us because it is their program, it is not our program. And we at NASA celebrate you for believing in us. Being a different kind of program, I was here in the spring and a young man, Kirk Goodall, came up to me and said, Dan, we can't be on the internet because we're going to get too many hits. He said, I'm concerned because we only have a capacity for 5 to 10 million hits here at JPL. So I authorized him so that every person in America who wanted to turn on to the internet to watch this mission could do it. And he informed me we now have a capacity somewhere between 75 and 100 million people to tune into the internet. And they told me that by about five or six o'clock today, they anticipated 40 million hits. This is exciting. <laughs> we are now really in the electronic age and I'm so proud that we could get this information to everyone who wants to see it. So let me at this point turn the program over to the real people who did it and tell you and all the people who work for you how proud I am, the Vice President, the President, and the American people, the people who allowed us to sit up here. Thank you very much. Okay, well, I don't think I need to tell you how uh, amazingly happy the flight team is. Uh, not just us, but uh, our friends and family who are here. This is really a spectacular day. It's, been, it's gone better than we really possibly could imagine. Sometimes we're, we're pitching ourselves, saying, is this, real, is, this, is this really real? Or, or are we uh, doing a simulation? But uh, no, the, the lander is on the surface of Mars. 
uh, and uh, we're getting data back from it. It looks very, very good. The rover is also giving us data. I'll give you some more specifics in a minute. Uh, but I think this is definitely, I'm sure I'm speaking for everybody on the flight team, Tony Spear, Brian Muirhead, that uh, this is definitely an experience that all of us will remember for the rest of our lives, that, uh, that, the, that this is really special and that uh, we're, 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 we're on the surface of another planet, uh, that we'll get to explore it over the next few weeks and months. Uh, and, and we will learn a great deal about uh, both ourselves and our solar system. So we're, we're, really, we're really pleased. Uh, let me just give you some, just some basic statistics about uh, the status of the lander uh, and the rover, just so that uh, I think most of it's gone, over, gone on uh, over the net, so you've probably heard it, but I'll summarize it. Uh, Jennifer Harris and the flight team are doing an excellent job of, of uh, assessing the, the health and, and uh, status. Basically, um, we, uh, we do know now that the airbags are fully retracted and the pedals are deployed. Rob will talk more about the e entry, descent, and landing process, what happened during that, during that, uh, full, during that phase. Uh, but, at the, but in the end, we're, the lander appears to be tilted about two and a half to three degrees, which is quite flat. Uh, in fact, uh, it's, uh, we were having a little pool there at the last minute as far as what we were betting, and it was, uh, it was a little bit lower than what we were guessing. We, uh, Routinely in our simulations get angles up to 10, 10 or 15 degrees, so this is great that uh, they were basically flat on the surface. Uh, the battery state of charge, which is a very important parameter for uh, how, how well we're able to continue doing surface operations, right now is at 76%. Again, that's beyond what we thought it would be. Uh, we didn't use as much power or energy during uh, entry, ascent, and landing, uh, which leaves more, more for surface operations. So uh, there again, we're, we're very pleased. Uh, the solar arrays are producing power on the lander. Um, obviously, that's a requirement for the mission to proceed, uh, and they look like they're operating fine. So again, uh, we're pleased with that. The camera, um, for those of you who might have missed it, we, do, do unlock the, we did unlock the camera in this last set of activities. Uh, the camera is unlocked, it is functioning, and we're, we're up actually, at, as we speak, probably doing the sun search uh, activity and, and beginning to take the first images. So. Uh, Hopefully, in a few uh, a few hours or a few minutes or less, we'll we'll be getting the, those first images back. Uh, the lander temperatures are all within the predicted range, and uh, basically, like I said, it's about as normal and about as uh, straightforward, uh, or essentially just what we estimate or just what we uh, calculated if everything were going to go right. Uh, as far as the rover is concerned. Uh, we did get information from the rover. Uh, the rover and lander are communicating well. About 98% of the packets are getting through between the rover and the lander, which is excellent. Uh, the rover is awake. It was awakened by, by, by lander command. Uh, all of its engineering subsystems checked out. All of its temperatures are within the expected range, solar arrays producing power. Uh, so we're basically, uh, like I said, uh, doing really well. And we, uh, as you heard over the, the net there, activated our uh, next sequence, and we're going to go ahead with the remainder of the surface mission. So with that, I'll let uh, Rob talk about uh, entry, descent, and landing. Well, the little engine that Huggle Plex designed that we've been thinking about and stewing over and testing and, and uh, trying to make work really did the job. And uh, uh, you've seen me, and I've sort of been representing the entry, descent, and landing team, but really this is a team that all Americans should be proud of because it involves so many people from all over this country of ours. Uh, it's uh, from coast to coast. Uh, and I wouldn't say every state in the Union, but a lot, of, a lot of people from all over helped, all over NASA as well as JPL. Uh, so it's, uh, it's something that a lot of people can take credit in, uh, and not just me. So uh, I, with that, I'm going to let you give a little bit of uh, interesting information about how it went. It turns out that the, there was a few surprises, not, not, not too many. One of the uh, this, the spacecraft landed almost exactly when we, at the time we predicted it. Um, uh, the, uh, we, the signals, uh, as, you, as you remember, we had uh, some interesting signals from the spacecraft after we landed. Uh, my, my worst case expectations were not, did not come true. It turns out the spacecraft was, was very visible, after all, once it rolled to a stop. The spacecraft uh, did, in fact, bounce as uh, the spacecraft was designed to do. In fact, it, uh, it bounced uh, quite high. Um, maybe I, I've got a, a, uh, uh, actually an accelerometer plot here, if you can, uh, if I can pull that one out. That's, that's not the right one. Actually, that is a good one. That's not a bad one for the, uh, uh, there we go. There's a good one right there. Maybe you can pull that one up. 
You can see, uh, I won't talk too much about the first one, you can see the, uh, the, the little tiny spike, that's just a, a, an anomaly in how we change the gains of the accelerometers, but that big, oh, big, uh, low, big bump here, that's the deceleration of the vehicle as it went through the atmosphere. Uh, soon thereafter, the software under, under, uh, under, its, uh, uh, under an algorithm that uses the acceleration, the, the deceleration profile to figure out when to open the parachute, opened the parachute a little bit later than we expected, which is indicative of the atmosphere being a little bit thinner than we expected. Uh, we don't know how much. Uh, as we, not too much later, the, the rockets fired, giving a nice little boost to the, to the vehicle, and hit the, then it hit the ground, and it hit the ground uh, a few times. At least uh, one, there's one bounce there. We think that we think those are bounces. We, this data was just put together by uh, Dave Gruel here about uh, literally 15 minutes ago. So we really haven't had much time to analyze it. But there's no question that the spacecraft hit the hit the hit the hit the surface of Mars quite hard. Uh, it, we don't we haven't looked at the orientation yet. But uh, the first time it hit the hit the surface of Mars was about 18 Gs. Uh, it bounced again about about 15 meters high, we think, uh, which is uh, pretty high. Uh, about 50 feet, and then it, it hit again about 9 Gs of, deceler of deceleration, and then it flew up again for another 7 meters in the air, and then hit even harder, 11 Gs, and uh, we haven't figured out what that's all about yet, but it might be in the fact that the spacecraft actually spun up as, as it uh, impacted, and that, that, could, that could fool the accelerometers into thinking it was actually a straight translation. So, uh, the, uh, there's a couple other surprises, and that's uh, the it looks like our de terminal descent velocity, that's the velocity that we, that we, we sense with the, with, the, with the radar, was about almost 10 meters per second faster. Instead of going about, uh, uh, let's see, I'm going to do a metric conversion. Instead of going about 120 miles per hour, they're more like 140 miles per hour uh, at the time the rockets fired, which is uh, a little bit surprising to us. It means that we don't really understand the, atmosphere, the atmospheric density of Mars as well as we thought. But, but on the hand, it was well within our expectations of how the, the, the uh, design was, the design envelopes. So uh, it, was just, it was just a little surprise. It wasn't a big deal. Uh, the other thing is, one of the, this is the part that uh, I lost this bet. I, there, this lander has four sides, uh, as a tetrahedron should. Uh, but what's the odds of rolling down in the base pedal, huh? One in four. Uh, it, I, I picked it was going to do this. Uh, this spacecraft rolled to a stop just like this. And we didn't have to roll, we didn't have to uh, open the pedals to right itself as we had designed it to do and tested oh so many times. So, uh, so it, you know, if people ask, well, how do you write yourself? Well, we don't have to write ourselves. We didn't, we didn't have to this time and uh, uh, didn't need these pedals after all, as Richard says. <laughs> <laughs> So the spacecraft appears to be, uh, the airbag's fully retracted and appears that the pedals are really op open, perfectly, perfectly flat. Uh, it's interesting, we, the software tells us that these things have happened uh, and, and, and did not uh, feel any errors or sense any errors during this process. So it's a very good bet that they really are. But we will get a better indication uh, in the next downlink session when we actually take, uh, take pictures around the periphery of the lander uh, and look at, see how the airbags are bunched around. The, the, the vehicle. So uh, that will be kind of the proof of the pudding, but uh, I'm very happy. And I, I really am not out of a job. Uh, it turns out that <laughs> uh, I'll be working uh, on surface operations with Richard for some time to come. And, uh, but uh, as far as the entry set landing job, uh, we're there and uh, we couldn't be happier. Thank you. Uh, sure. Um, I, I, let's see, I, we have uh, another picture of, uh, of the, uh, some of the temperatures on, let's see, not that one, uh, the one we just had. No, no, one more. No, actually, well, actually, how about pull out the landing site picture? There's a, uh, we've got several, the very, first one. The very, I think this is the very first picture we have here to show uh, where we think we landed. Uh, here, okay, go ahead. That's a good one. Why don't, you, why don't you go ahead and pull that up so people can see. Well, this is where we think we are. And it's interesting to note, our navigators, if you remember, put us in this region uh, early this morning by, se by 7 o'clock. It turned out that 
Uh, we ended up landing a little earlier uh, in terms of, I say earlier, I mean a little bit uh, less downrange of our landing site. Remember, we're coming in from the northeast, going in this direction, working our way past the, uh, the center of our desired ellipse, and this is where we ended up. We thought we would be down here. Uh, um, Matt can tell you more about what we're going to see if we land in this, re if we really are here. The reason this thing got so small, we're not sure why it moved just yet, but uh, uh, it, it appears that the, there may have been an atmospheric density differences than what we expected, as I mentioned before. That, that's one possibility. Uh, maybe other reasons as well, but it, this information was acquired over uh, DSS 65, is that right, Richard? Yes, and uh, at, uh, at the uh, SPF, S SPF uh, uh, the station in Madrid, the D space station in Madrid over a few hours before we went to the to the before we got into EDL. So I think uh, we're safely there, and I'm going to uh, let uh, Dr. Tim Schofield talk a little bit about what we might get from a science point of view from this entry, descent, and landing data. Okay, thanks, Rob. Um, the first uh, picture. Thank you. The um, the ASI met uh, is composed of two parts. Uh, one, one part of the experiment is to understand the structure of the atmosphere as we ent enter the atmosphere. The other part is, to, is basically a weather station on the surface of Mars. Um, and we have now got the first data from the first part of that, that mission. This, this slide that's showing now shows you a detail of the acceleration curve that uh, Rob showed you earlier. At time zero, we're at about 160 kilometers. Uh, we, we hurtle into the very tenuous upper atmosphere and accelerations uh, are building up gradually all the time. Finally, we hit the maximum deceleration peak here at about, of about 15 G at, at, uh, at about uh, 120, 130 seconds, which is a height of 30 or 40 kilometers. If I could have the next uh, slide, please. This is the same data, but plotted on a scale which shows our measurements from very high in the atmosphere. From uh, here we have uh, 10 millionths of, of a G acceleration and building up all the way as it comes in, all the way up to that, that 15 G acceleration peak again. Uh, and then you have the parachute, uh, the parachute deployment <coughs> pulse there. This, this information is going to let us um, work out the density profile of the atmosphere from, from basically all the way out high in the atmosphere down to well below the deceleration peak, down to, the, down to where the parachute deploys. Uh, we then have pressure and temperature measurements uh, below that level also. Um, we have very preliminary data from the uh, lander part of the mission. Uh, we haven't deployed our mast yet. It looks as if the temperatures uh, that we're measuring are around 220 Kelvin, which is about minus, minus 64 Fahrenheit. Those temperatures are uh, somewhat warmer than Viking, but the mast is, is very da close down to the spacecraft on the petal, so it may well be that the, we, the uh, sensors are being heated by the sun rather more than they would be when they're up in their correct position. Uh, so we hope we're looking forward uh, in the next coming hours to, to getting the rest of this entry data set, much higher resolution, uh, and working out the density profile and hopefully the pressure and temperature profile and then getting the time series of, of atmospheric data. It looks as if both instruments have worked perfectly. Uh, Richard mentioned this being uh, like a simulation. To, to my mind, it's nothing like the simulations. The simulations <laughs> went wrong all the time. Uh, from the point of view of the scientists, the data was always getting lost and going wrong, but so far it's been going very, very smoothly. Okay. Uh, you've heard the very first data we've gotten from our spacecraft, or first science data, I should say, and that will help the atmospheric scientists try to work out this entry, descent, and profile of what the atmosphere is like all the way from 120 kilometers down to the surface. Um, I'd like to back up to about 3 a.m. this morning, yeah, this morning, and show you uh, uh, what we went through in the, in the last few hours prior to entry. Uh, if I could have the first slide, please. Uh, what you see here is the landing ellipse um, in the, the so-called science ellipse in this large yellow. And uh, at about 9.30 uh, last night and later at about 2 a.m. this morning, the ellipse was this white one shown here, uh, which actually cuts through uh, the southern half, or sorry, northern half of this streamlined island. And uh, some of us scientists were 
there at JPL at midnight to 2 a.m. trying to determine the slopes on the streamlined Lyland to make sure that they were uh, within the tolerances that the spacecraft could handle to determine if we needed to do a uh, trajectory correction maneuver to try to nudge us into a so-called safer region. And one nudge would have put us over in this region. Uh, another could have put us up in here, which actually looked worse. <laughs> Uh, one could have put us down here, which is definitely worse, uh, and cooler heads prevailed, and we, we in fact did not do that trajectory correction maneuver, um, and we wound up landing right in this small uh, piece of this uh, ellipse shown here. Uh, and the next slide shows a, a high resolution, a detail of that. Um, what's shown on this uh, is the best prediction from the navigation team as to where we actually wound up on the surface of Mars uh, and it's somewhere within this ellipse and you can choose your pixel and that's the one we're in. <laughs> we do not know which pixel we're in and it may take us a while to figure it out. Um, what also shows on this are the 20 pixel elements that should be visible from a portion within that circle of large hills like this one here uh, 20 pixels could be seen by the camera if we landed within that red circle. And there's a larger streamlined island to the south. Could we go back one slide just for a moment, please? Um, back to the one we were just showing. Thank you. This large streamlined island, uh, sorry, this one right here, is about 500 meters high, we think, uh, with what may be a boulder bar behind it. Uh, this should be visible in a much, much larger region, this red circle shown here. Uh, back to the next one again, that's the circle uh, you see here. And again, here's a small hill. Well, small, that's a building. <laughs> uh, small hill with, again, that 20 pixel element that should be visible. Here's a crater that we should see. Um, and so we're hopeful that uh, after we turn on the imager and start taking pictures, which we have actually are doing, I guess, um, we will see some of these things. What you'll also notice uh, are this series of what we call secondary craters. And if you look carefully at these craters, they have a bit of a herringbone pattern, which actually tells you the direction that the primary crater hit the surface of Mars. And this is ejecta from that primary crater that is now flopping across the surface. And those herringbones point to the south. We believe the primary crater for these uh, secondary uh, ejecta craters is about 60 to 100 kilometers, or that's one guess, um, and we might be somewhere in the midst of these as well. And there was some worry, of course, that this would be a very rocky area since that uh, there's quite a bit of ejecta around these craters. Interestingly also is that these craters seem to have captured some of the dark mafic material. If you look at the pictures of Mars that we've shown, there's sort of this reddish material, and then there's this dark black surface stuff. We think that's a dark mafic sand, and we may have the prospect of actually seeing some of that. Uh, all of which we don't know what we will see. Again, I don't know which pixel we're in, uh, and we'll just have to wait and see. Um, okay, now what's next? Uh, within the next half hour or so, 35 minutes, the meteorolog meteorology mast, the one meter mast, will deploy into the upright configuration with the wind mast on top and the three temperature sensors and we hope to get our first uh, weather report from the surface of Mars. Uh, at about uh, 35 minutes from now, uh, we should be, if we're very fortunate enough to get the high gain antenna, start receiving the very first images from the surface of Mars. And I want to walk you through what to expect uh, when you see them and warn all right the time you, is uh, uh, timetable is set the clock is ticking 34 minutes from right now it is very possible we could be seeing the first picture sent live from the surface of Mars in the past 20 years um, and that's what the scientists are saying we're gonna go uh, to money line now and um, we'll be back at about half past the next hour or if the first pictures get here ahead of the half of half past the next hour we'll be back with those as well John Holloman CNN reporting as uh, our journey to the red planet continues okay,
this is the live picture. You can see the excitement on people's faces. You can hear the excited... Uh, Let's listen to the commentator there. ...more as Pathfinder Mission Control, uh, as they have been locking on the high-gain antenna, or right on schedule, uh, at 4.30 Pacific Daylight Time, uh, and they have indications that the high-gain antenna has located the sun. Well, this is good news. One of the things Located that had to happen... Is essential for transmission of data from the high-gain antenna. Donna Shirley, you're the Mars the Exploration Manager for NASA. Listen to this and comment when you like. Of Mars. Okay. Well, what's happened is it looks like that the uh, sun-finding algorithm, that is the equation that told the camera to find the sun, has indeed worked. The computer program on board the lander completely autonomously has found the sun and then they were able to actually point the high gain antenna they the lander all by itself at the earth and so we are now starting to get a signal from the high gain antenna which means that we will be getting the pictures back a lot so of cheering and yelling and screaming and uh at a boy and at a girl going on in this room more handshakes and cheers we and have four frames in lock so far I suspect that the pictures have started to come in. Donna, uh, there are a lot of computer monitors in that room, including two that we can't look directly into where the, uh, the shift uh, leader is looking. Where is, will the first picture come in? Well, I don't know which monitor the picture comes in on, but they're supposed to go up on NASA Select uh, right away. So within uh, some small period of time, we should be able to pull them off of the NASA Select feed. Okay, we have, we have an internet site here that uh, plugs in to the Jet Propulsion Lab, and I believe the pictures are coming in on that internet site right now. We'll, uh, we'll okay. check that and pop it up, and uh, we may get it as quickly as the folks at NASA Select get it. We'll find out. And, uh, now, what these, go ahead, let me Donna. explain what these pictures will be of. Mm -hmm. If you can get down on our little model here, where these pictures will be of the edges of the solar arrays to make sure that the airbags are neatly tucked in under the solar arrays and that they're not lopping over onto the pedals and blocking the pedals. And we're particularly interested in the pedal that the rover is on because we need to be able to deploy the ramps off the ends of the, off the edges of the solar panel so that the rover can crawl off on the ramps and get down onto the surface. And that's the next big event um, after the picture's coming in. Now these pictures that we're getting are just little black and white images, very highly compressed, just of ugly little airbags and possibly the rover's wheels. Uh, so that, and, and the rover's, um, part of the rover and part of the ramps that are gonna unfold for the rover to get down. So these are not gonna be very pretty. The pretty pictures are gonna come in at about 6.30. Yep, I bet you a picture just came Wait, that, That's probably an image right there. Yeah, there it, it is, there it is, that what? is an image. Okay, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. What is it? It's, uh... Okay, well, we can see a little bit of Mars. There's rocks. There's the airbags just sticking up just a little bit. They look just fine. But we've got Mars. We've got rocks on Mars. And boy, is... Uh, is that a rover a wheel? Was that... Yeah, that was the rover wheel there a minute ago. Now, I can't tell what this is. Boy, these are hard to see on this little bitty uh, screen here. Donna CNN is going to try okay, eventually to get a bigger panel. That's, okay, a, solar that's a solar panel, panel there, John. See the yeah. solar arrays on it? You can see that. And this must be, look at those airbags. They're just beautiful. They're all tucked in very neatly. They're not on top of the pedals at all. Which really means you're in excellent position to get the rover off. Excellent position to get the rover off. Now there'll be some more coming in because what they want to do is to take pictures all around the edges of the pedals to make sure that there's no uh, interference. Will they put them together then in a mosaic, so to speak? Of... Yes, they will, but uh, they probably won't even bother to mosaic these pictures because what they're going to do is wait for the color pictures to come down. Now that they know the high-gain antenna is correctly pointed, the next images that come down will be the color images, and then they're going to make a really beautiful mosaic that'll have color, that'll have the rover in it, the rover will be right there in the middle of the picture, and... Uh, now this is, you know, we should be pretty excited. These are the first pictures yeah. in 21 years. odd years yes. from the surface of absolutely, Mars. Absolutely, absolutely. This is a tremendous event unfolding it right is. here and now. There's, and there's rocks right there, so the rover won't even have to go very far to find rocks. I mean, this is just... It's beautiful. It barely has to go off the limb and uh, get to work pedal, with the, to right. the pedal with the Alpha Spectra uh, Spectrometer, alpha. Proton, X ray, Proton Spectrometer. Alpha, Proton, proton X ray, ray spectrometer. spectrometer. Very good. And, and uh, it doesn't have to move very far. Yes, yes, John. Let me just jump in. 
the, these pictures are coming in in very rapid succession, it looks to me like. Is that an indication that the high-gain antenna is doing precisely what it's supposed to be? I mean, I've seen seven different views show up on this computer screen just in the past few minutes while we've been talking. Absolutely. This means okay. the high-gain antenna is not only pointed at the Earth. There's a good wider photo. I don't oh, wow. That's, uh, that's hard to see, though. Oh, here it goes. This is one of the pedal actuators that we you have can see here. here. One of the motors that actually opens the pedal up like that. Uh, Wayne, can you, uh, Does it look good to really you, Donna? To it looks beautiful to me. <laughs> <laughs> now, is the... It, Right John, now, is the vehicle uh, taking, is, uh, this is all pre-programmed to take these? You haven't oh, yeah. commanded we it to do any of this. We haven't said a word to the vehicle yet. These are all pre-programmed, and there's going to be something like, I forget how many of these, but they're 80 to 1 compression. So if these are this good, you can imagine what the real pictures, when they get in color and full and not compressed, are going to look like. Do it compare these, just from what we're looking at, to the Viking pictures. Right. I mean, these are probably and better than the Viking pictures. Well, not yet, but they sure will be. They'll be a lot better. Now, see this here is showing where these pictures are being taken, this little pie chart? Yes. It's showing where the pictures are actually being taken uh, it, with respect to the lander so that you can see. Now, here's some, oh, wow, here's some close-ups. So, and see the airbags? There's a little bit of airbag sticking and there, that's on the, a little bit. On the right side of the screen, John, that's the airbag and right. the, and then, and, and and the wheel. See, and on the left side. little airbag over airbag here. Bite. And what they're trying the to do now, yeah, Donna and John, they're trying to begin to mosaic these pictures together. Those well, two pictures, uh, yeah, they appear okay, to be great. together at this point. So the picture oh, that we're yes. getting is okay. bigger and bigger and bigger, and uh, okay, very good. More and more fascinating. Uh, Donna, I don't know how well you can see on that tiny little TV set where you are. Not well. Yeah. <laughs> Not well. Oh, the left side of the uh, uh, of the the two pictures, there appears to be a little black blob sort of in the center of that picture just this, uh, this here yeah um uh, now yeah. is that a normal looking thing to you uh actually i'm not sure what that is but it's too regular to be abnormal i see uh, okay. it's, it's probably uh, just oh i know what it is uh when the when the panels are latched together yeah they come together and if we can look down at our little model can we oh we can't it doesn't do you any good we can't see it anyway when the panels are folded up they're latched together and that's one of the latches. And how you release that latch is you fire a pyrotechnic device that pulls the pin out, and then the rover pedals can come apart. And that's what that is. Yep. This is amazing. I mean, and look at those rocks. Look at those rocks. John, There's rocks the right up, there. The upper <laughs> left of that uh, picture on your left, Donna's referring to those rocks that are right off of the pedal. Yep. I can see them out there. Yeah, now, we have I a. Can't a really I'm having uh, trouble telling what the thing on the right is. On the right-hand side, it, with, is with that the is. rover wheel that we're looking so. at? No. It doesn't look like it. No. It's really hard to tell from this tiny little monitor. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to get more pictures. To be rocks. Uh, we're going to get more pictures. Oh, yeah. That's right. And as we get more, Donna, I was going to ask you before we went into a news conference a little while ago, if, if this were an ideal world and everything worked exactly the way it was supposed to, how many pictures would we see from the surface of Mars over the next seven days? Oh, lousy. Lots and lots. I don't know. <laughs> hundreds and hundreds. I don't know how to count them. Hundreds and hundreds, that's right. And uh, now they'll be taking pictures of different objects. So first they'll do a complete scan of the horizon uh, with all 12 different colors. Yeah. This, this camera takes pictures in stereo in 12 different colors. And the people at... Uh, Back at your end are wearing 3D glasses, some of them, uh, to, to get the, right. the depth and all on these. That's could because uh, these pictures are coming in in stereo. Could our viewers do the same thing? If they watch these pictures at home, if they had 3D glasses on, could they see some of the, uh, of the relief in the pictures? No. Okay. No, these, uh, these pictures have to be very carefully processed, and it's a very special, very high technology uh, silicon graphics uh, computer that makes them into 3D. Okay. And I you see. have to have very special glasses to see it. There's a new photo up there yeah, now, John. One. It looks like, is that airbags? Uh... Yeah, that's airbags around the edge. Around okay, the edge. Okay, now this is of the edge. And see, the airbags are tucked in close to the pedal, and there's another rock right there and that's a light rock so we've so far got dark rocks and light rocks which is exactly what you want we wanted now i don't know if these are really dark and really light because we won't be able to tell until we get them oh wow there there's go. a real close-up okay yeah, yeah see this is the this is the edge of the pedal and it looks just fine to me little mission commentary in the background there is the folks in the control room with that computer are uh, talking about these pictures. We all, uh, uh, you can hear a lot of background noise there, and we'll uh, we'll continue to listen up as we hear what these people have to say. Uh, yeah. I 
<laughs> if they're making commentary, it's better than my commentary because they can see the pictures better. <laughs> yes, all of the relays are in the correct position. The battery state of charge is 72.8%. The shunt current is 1.35 amps. Bus current high is 3.25. Bus current low is 3.33. The battery is charging at 0.12 amps. The battery is discharge is zero. Pedal solar array current is 3.37. The bus voltage is 28.8. The battery Perfect. voltage is 28.96. Perfect. The battery temperatures are 18.87 and 19.55. So everything All of these numbers the are just perfect. Is nominal. The battery everything is at a higher is totally state of nominal. charge. Great. That the, means uh, all the power system is working right. Slide ACS. Go ahead, ACS. The quaternion uh, Oh, here's Planet oh, Fest. This is an interesting John. sight. The uh, people here are watching at the Planet Fest in Pasadena, California. And uh, there's a huge crowd there. Hundreds and hundreds of people are interested in planetary exploration. They are looking at these pictures on a big screen TV. And... Um, they just seem to be fascinated. They're not cheering like the mission scientists are, but they are certainly enraptured by what they're seeing on the surface of Mars, as are we all. Uh, John, uh, there, there are about 2,000 people there, and I don't know if you heard Donna before. Uh, she was saying that all of that data that they were reporting is just says that the vehicle is performing, performing perfectly, the batteries are in perfect condition, everything is in excellent shape. Yeah, the temperatures this are right on. That's, I mean, temperature is a big oh, thing yeah. on Mars, Donna, because it varies so dramatically from uh, middle of the day to the middle of the night, right? Yes, somebody told us that it was actually only minus 64 degrees Fahrenheit, which is quite warm for that time of the night. I mean, remember, it's, uh, well, it's dawn now, and the sun is starting to come up and warm things up. Wow, now that is, what is that? That's an airbag with dirt. Okay, good dirt. So Henry Moore will be very happy. He likes dirt. Geologists love dirt. Yeah. And this is mostly so a geology mission, right, Don? I mean, the pictures are fabulous for us, but the folks who are really going to be able to get a lot from this are geologists who are going to look at these various rocks as the rover goes around and points its, uh, uh, its looker at these various samples that are there on the surface of Mars. It's actually more like a sniffer. Yeah. And so as well as looking, it's going to sniff them. And so we're not, we'll not only know what they look like, but what the chemistry of them is. A little chemistry set in space. Oh. It's just amazing. Okay, now there's another, uh, there's another actuator. So all this stuff is showing that everything is just perfect. I mean, it just looks, it looks like that model in the auditorium. No kidding. I, there are a couple of the wheels. This is what happens, you know, when they open the cargo bay on the space shuttle. They do a okay, survey. Oh, these are the rocker bogies. Okay. What we're seeing here is the, this must be the back of the, now that's a solar panel. Oh, there's a wheel. wheel. See that circular, shiny thing there up yeah. in the upper right we corner? We had seen one just a minute yeah. ago as well. Yeah. Yeah, we've seen uh, at least the three wheels on one side, Donna, go by. Okay, now this is some airbags. Okay, this is in between the uh, pedals here. I can't really tell what these look like. This is Mars Pathfinder Mission Control. I can't tell what that particular... Oh, look at that, Donna. That's, uh, that's wow. looking out from the road. Okay, rover. all right. Rocks, rocks, lots of rocks. Beautiful. Looks kind of like Mars. Oh, there's a big rock. There's a big rock. Yep. Right up at the upper right-hand corner of your screen. Yeah. Oh, boy, is the rover going to love to get its spectrometer on that one? Yeah. Woo. Folks at Planet Fest are up on their feet now. It's like uh, the World Series out there. Up and applauding. Oh, this is incredible. Just look at that. It's an easy trek over to that rock, an easy trek. So we can send the rover right over there. And the rover can put a spectrometer on that rock anywhere. That's a nice picture, too, a nice wide picture. Oh, yeah. Oh, look, there's, there's a big, oh, those are big rocks. Those are lovely. Now, see, this is the advantage of the airbags. Because if we landed with propulsion the way the Pathfinder had, we wouldn't have been stood off from the rocks like this. We could have been right on top of them. But the yeah. airbags have stood us off from the rocks, we and so those airbags have done their job. And also, if you were using a rocket to get you down there, a lot of what was on the surface would have blown away by the rocket blast, right? I mean, this is pretty well, much that, undisturbed. That's true, except for where the airbags have actually dragged in. But that's actually good because that turns rocks over, and the, we'd like for the rover to be able to put its spectrometer against the unweathered side of the rock, so we'd like to turn rocks over. Uh -huh. So if the airbags have turned a few rocks over, we're going to be very happy. I Although we don't expect to find any worms under there. <laughs> Donna, I can't tell if you have just planned this so very well so that everything that happens is just exactly the way you want it, 
or uh, if uh, it's just a very lucky night for you and your Pathfinder team? I think it's probably the former. <laughs> Well, a lot of it's the former, but a lot of it has to be the latter because we don't know what Mars is like. I mean, we were diving into an unknown terrain. It's like if you were going to Acapulco, you know those divers that dive off the uh, rocks? The pearl divers, and yeah. They've done it before, so they know where they're going. But if you went up the first time and you didn't know, you'd probably kill yourself, right? Yeah, So this probably. is just like diving in where we don't know what, the, diving into the pool where we don't know what's under there. And so there's a lot of luck to it that we have... Uh, as, as well as just superb engineering and science. Now, there's the rover. Okay, this is the solar panel of the rover. And you see on the top edge, there's a close-up now, that bent part that's got a double bend, that's the antenna. Yeah. So that means the antenna's locked in properly. The solar arrays look good. There's yeah. rocks right there. Everything is looking terrific. That wow. was looking down right on top Locked of right Sojourner. Right on top of Sojourner, that's right. Now, she hasn't stood up yet, right. so when she stands up, then uh, it will be... Uh, It'll be somewhat uh, different view. Donna, and this is approximately when will Sojourner stand up, and how does that work? Okay, as soon as these pictures are in, if the scientists put them together and determine, and the engineers and determine that it's safe. Oh, there's some airbag stuff all folded up, and I don't know where that is. So I don't know if this is a problem or not. But uh, if they determine that the airbags are in good condition, then they'll right away send the command to deploy the meteorology mast and for the rover to stand up and for the ramps to deploy. Then, after they deploy the ramps and the rover stood up, they'll take another picture. That's when they get this really nice color panorama. Yeah. That is what they'll make the decision to send the rover off or not. Now, how, so, long uh, that, you, how long do you anticipate it to take for all of these postage stamp size pictures, as others have described them, to come in? I mean, how long before they have the mosaic ready to show us? Well, I really don't know. I think it will probably be another uh, few minutes. But we're getting because to see we're getting to see these things absolutely the first, just as they come out. Absolutely. On the absolutely. We promised that to the world. We said as soon as we get these pictures, everybody's gonna be uh, everybody's gonna get to see them just as soon as we do. And this is really unprecedented because always before the scientists have had rights to the data, so they could hold the data for a long time until they felt comfortable releasing it. And Peter Smith has taken the risk of just putting it out there without uh, without knowing what it was going to look like, and that's quite courageous for a scientist. All right. Um, oh, well, listen, Donna, we've got a picture now of uh, uh, your crew in Mission Control doing the same thing our viewers are doing all over the world now, looking at the TV set as these pictures come in. Our right. viewers actually have a, a slight advantage over the people in the control room in that we can take the little pictures and blow them up to fill the entire TV screen. It's a, right. it's a pity you don't have a big t TV screen like I do. But, uh, well, all I have is this scrunchy little monitor. Oop, there's some rocks. Okay, now, see this rock? It's all pebbly looking. Now, Viking had rocks that, the Viking images had rocks that looked much like that as well. Yeah. Uh, but then there's a rock beyond. I'm not a scientist, and so I'm just blithering here, but the rock beyond doesn't look to me like it's as rough. And what we want in this landing site is to have all kinds of different rocks. And I bet you we're going to get them. Sand yeah, looks as if it's almost windblown there. In the right, it probably is. In fact, that looks like a little dust drift right, to me. Right, right. But again, we're not scientists, so uh, I'll defer and let the scientists talk about what it really is. Well, it is a fascinating picture, Don. I'm looking at it as closely as I can here. And it looks sort of like a lava rock, like you might have in your, in your, um, your garden or if you went to Hawaii or someplace. Um, but here's another picture, I think probably the other side of the same rock. Yeah, that's the other side of that same rock. Yeah. And it, it looks almost spongy. I don't know if that's what you said or not, but it, it appears to be lying on a beach with very fine powdery sand in this black and white view. Right. Well, actually, that's what the Viking 1 site looked like and the Viking 2 site as well, is they had rocks like that with windblown sand that had blown up against them. And so, uh, at least to uh, first order, this doesn't look you know, all that different than Viking, except the rock on the right looks to me lighter than the rock on the left. How far away? is this landing site roughly from the Viking landing oh, it's, site? Oh, uh, it's well over a thousand kilometers. So it's really a long way away as, as planetary distances go. It's, uh, and we expect the terrain uh, to be quite a bit different. We don't think that the Viking landing site, that's Viking 1, uh, was, uh, was uh, in this river valley. Now, Donna, you say in this... Mostly crater. Yeah, in this river valley. Any idea how long ago it was that a river was flowing down through these, this area of rocks here? No, and that's, uh, okay, there's, uh, ooh, I don't know what that is. 
there's, we That's really don't know. The best we can do is uh, say that by age dating, that means by counting the number of craters. If there's fewer craters, that looks like a hole to me. It looks like something that's been... A depression, been, kind of, yeah. A depression. Yeah. Now, maybe that's where the airbags dragged a rock out. That could be. Uh-huh. Uh, that's just a guess on my part. Well... Uh, multi, the... Uh, multi -emission there it is. The... Uh, I lost my train of thought. What were we talking about? <laughs> well, that's what we're I'm seeing in the picture. The, the, the age of, oh, the, uh, age, of, yes. of uh, the, way, the river. The only way you can tell how old things is on Mars because we don't have a piece back yet to age date. Okay, now this is a calibration target. See that circle? Mm -hmm. And so that's going to help the camera calibrate its color. And so that's why we're going to get the, uh, the color to be right. Uh, on those first color pictures. Sort of like in TV, uh, we uh, point our camera at something white and push a button and it gets right. all the other colors right. Right, and this is, uh, this is sort of the same sort of thing. Now, the uh, age of the river valley that we're in is not, to, wow! Look at, look at that. Look at that. Oh, that's great. Oh, look at all those rocks. Looks like Arizona to me. Sojourner's so gonna have a field day. This is just beautiful. What is that? Oh, well, it... oh, oh, look at that. There's a flat, yep. flat top flat, rock. Flat top rock. Wow. This is amazing. <laughs> this is amazing. Now, Donna, this looks like a piece of airbag over here. Yep. Uh, I was that's, all back... rip, that's, that's what they're really trying to do is take Everybody pictures of airbags, but they, every now and then they goof up and get a really nice rock picture. <laughs> Wasn't that spectacular? I mean, it really did. It looked like Arizona with little tumbleweeds and things. Obviously not tumbleweeds, but ooh, look at this. Right. There's another one. Oh, wow. There's something. Oh, see that rock? That looks like a big one. Oh, my gosh. Another That's one a here. big one. And a, a three see, or four here. Now, see, there's your airbags. Airbags save this. Yeah. Wow. If we tried to land propulsively in this area, we would have been creamed. <laughs> Apparently, we were not so, cream. <laughs> nope. Tom Rivellini and his crew really did their job. Wow. And ILC Dover, I should mention that ILC Dover was the contractor that built the airbags for us. When I talked to Tom Rivellini this afternoon, he had said to me, he says, I wasn't worried about the airbags. I was worried about everybody else's systems. <laughs> <laughs> I knew they'd work, he said. And they did. Yep, they did. Really remarkable. They were the thing that was making everybody nervous. You know, everybody call in and say, oh, those airbags are not dangerous. But it looks to me like they just worked yeah, perfectly. That, uh, the landscape shot shows. Well, the, the pictures the keep on coming. This is, boy, I, you know, I'm going to be able to tell my four-year-old that I was here on this night. Now, look at this flat rock here. Wow. Uh, isn't that one. interesting? A huge huh? rock. Went flat away. rock. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I don't know if this is a rock or an airbag, flat this rock. piece here. Oh, you know, gosh, that's just, uh, I don't know, that's airbag. Yeah. That's airbag. But that quick picture of the flat rock, it looked like sandstone almost. Uh, it was incredible. It was now, on now the top. we know that what happened was that these rocks got dragged downstream. And so it could be that they got dragged so hard that it abraded the top of them off, or it could be that they were actually from a flat part of the terrain and were kind of floated down. And uh, so we just don't know. Boy, are the scientists going to have fun with this. I was going to say, this area is going yeah, to be a field day, be, isn't yes, it? Yes, there are going to be happy, happy, happy scientists. And it'll take years to figure out what all this means, right, Donna? Yes, I mean, yes, they'll be it looking will. at this, and people will do their doctoral theses on things like this. Uh, For years and years. Now, we have actually, uh, with the Viking data, they spent 20 years analyzing it. And uh, we can spend 20 years analyzing this data, too. Whoa, you look can at this. rewrite everything. Look, look at, at this, this, you guys. Oh. Does that look like a hill? Wow. or a, what See, is... there's that flat rock again. It, it almost looked like the contour yeah. of the land was going up. Well, that's, that's what they thought they might actually be able to see. Is, you know, rise something in, in the, the rise in the distance. Yeah. Now, that's, uh, that looks like a wheel. Oh, no, that's, I think that's the APX. I think that's the spectrometer on the back of the on rover, the but I'm not rover. sure. Oh, that's the sniffer. No, that, there's a wheel. Uh, you can yeah, see it. Yeah, there's a, a wheel. A, okay. The central area in that. Uh, there's no airbags on top of anything. You know, the wheels look really good. Um, I can't see the restraints. They're cheering. We're getting cheers. Is that cheers from Mission Control or cheers from... Uh, from the Planet, Planet Fest. Fest. I can't tell. We're okay. hearing things from all over right now. <laughs> oh, wow. There's Sojourner. Look, you can see the little teeth on the wheel. And yeah. the rocker, rocker bogey. bogeys are, are looking good there. Yeah, that's the little teeth. That's what somebody's pointing out. Yeah, that's, I'm working the little that's illustrator. John with oh, that's John. Okay, yeah. okay. And then the rocker bogey is that thing full of holes. There's... Okay, there's another one. Yeah, all right. Oh, I wish we had, we had better light. Well, coming soon. It'll that's be... the wheel again. Yeah. yeah, that's the wheel again. You're right. With the axle, the shiny part yes. of the axle. There's two wheels, Donna. There's one visible there and one visible there. Yep, yep, yep. Looking good. 
Same picture again, now, when, I think. When the rover gets off, then we'll be able to take similar pictures of the lander from the rover. Yeah. Which will really be cool. We're currently seeing Okay, there's uh, there's some of the tracks, as the long skinny thing is the tracks. Oh, that's the, 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 the red out. carpet that, it'll, uh, that will roll right. out for it. Yeah. Well, I don't believe they have, I do not believe they have unrolled the ramps yet, and no. I don't really, I can't really spot the ramps. Well, they wouldn't do that until they were sure that the bags were out of the way, correct? That, that's right. Yeah. That's Donna, right. what are so these, these things? Pictures... Look like dominoes. Can you, uh, can you tell me? It, here's there on the you edge know, of the air brake. I can't tell you. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what those are. Hope they're from Earth. Uh. Oh, yeah, they are. <laughs> I'll guarantee. Okay, now there's nothing for Earth. That's from Mars. And there's a long... Wow. Boy, I wish I could see these better. Mm. Would you guys get better monitors, please? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With all the money we're making on this, Donna Shirley, we'll get you a big TV for the, all for right, the future. All right, get me a big TV. Yeah. I want a great big monitor. <laughs> Now there's okay, some, now, there's some more that? of these domino-looking yeah. things. I'm, I'm okay, well, that must be part of the structure. I don't know what mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what it is. Yeah, when it's put all together with the rest See, of and, them, and, I'm sure and I don't know that. what those uh, spoke-looking things going are on out these. here because uh, yeah. I can't quite see. You know, I don't know the perspective. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what those are. Okay. As the pictures seen... continue to come in, Donna, we're going to take a quick um, local cable break, and we'll be back at the top of the hour with more of this. What a, what a night. We are, making, we are seeing history being made, ladies and gentlemen, from the surface of planet Mars, live pictures being beamed back to Earth. Pretty soon they'll be put together in one big old beautiful panoramic view of the planet. And um, uh, we'll be here to bring the whole thing to you as the evening continues. Stay with CNN.